Hello everyone, my name is Provis. We're going to take a look at Star Traders Frontiers today, currently in early access on Steam. Now before we get started, for full disclosure, I was provided a free copy of the game by the developers, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Now that said, I'd like to offer my thanks to the Treese Brothers for sending a copy my way. This game definitely has a lot of potential, and it will be interesting to see how it develops in the future. So, what is Star Traders Frontiers? It is the successor to the Treese Brothers mobile game Star Traders RPG. And as a result, the game has heavy sci-fi RPG elements to it, but it also mixes in a roguelike, procedurally generated world and adds in turn-based combat, both in space and on the ground. You play as a starship captain, trying to make your way through a galaxy in political turmoil as the old feuds between the great houses reach new heights. It's your responsibility to maneuver the shifting political landscape of the galaxy to take care of your ship and your crew. Now, exactly how you're going to accomplish that is an open-ended question. There are several different roles available to you at the beginning of the game, and your play style may shift accordingly. Are you looking to play as a neutral merchant, simply running goods between worlds and making friends wherever possible to secure profitable trade permits? Or perhaps you'll get caught up in the personal vendettas of the Great Houses and serve as a spy or a bounty hunter making a more direct impact on the political landscape. Or, perhaps you'd rather keep things simple and just pillage everything in sight as a ruthless pirate. It's all up to you, and the various contacts and factions will react to your choices accordingly. The galaxy is always in a state of flux as the factions pursue their own interests, and you can be sure that no two games of Star Traders Frontiers will be exactly alike. Now, as I said, this game is very much an RPG, and you can imagine that character creation is a crucial first step. So let's go ahead and create a new captain. Right off the bat, you can see that there are four classes in the game by default, at least for now. I imagine more will be added as the game is developed. But uh, yeah, if you are interested in playing as a pirate, explorer, a bounty hunter, or a smuggler, then these are the options for you. It tries to give you a rough idea what these will prioritize, but if you are brand new to the game, odds are pretty good you won't know what's really worth it. So just choose something that sounds fun and suits a playstyle that you envision. If you don't like any of these, though, you could create your own template, which would allow you to choose from a few more options, like a uh, spy or a religious zealot. You can then choose what kind of ship you want to start off with, what kind of contacts you might have, merchants, smugglers, and so on. Choose your attributes, and then choose some extra skills. Once you've chosen your class, you have to decide what your character is going to look like and choose your starting faction. Now, this isn't as important as it sounds because I don't think you're really tied down to that faction. It makes sense to be friends with your starting faction, but if you want to abandon the early storyline and go do whatever you want, you totally can and then make friends with somebody else. Up to you. But this will determine your starting location and your initial contacts, which will try to shape the early storyline for you. Again, whether you follow it is totally up to you. Now let's take a look at an already established character, Captain Provis, the level 12 bounty hunter. Now the level 12 is very impressive, it's not, but I've only put a few hours into the game, so we gotta start somewhere. Captain Provis's character sheet is visible right here, you can see the attributes, skills, traits, and backgrounds that help to define my character. I can also change out my equipment, change how I look, and then I can manage my jobs and talents. Now jobs and talents you will get points for as you level up, as you gain experience and these will help define the skills of your character. So right now, I have three jobs for my main character. I'm a bounty hunter, commander, and a soldier, and these will affect different things. Bounty hunter, for example, gives me extra skill with a rifle, I have better evasion chance, and I'm more intimidating. I kind of chose to stack these up a little bit as best I could. I probably should have just done one job, but I was experimenting, whatever. So these increase your skills and make the overall effectiveness of your character, but on top of that, they also dictate what kind of talents you will have access to. Talents are kind of interesting. They uh, are basically abilities for your character, or passive or active abilities. And some of them will affect only space combat, some will affect only ground combat. Others are just skill checks for uh, random events. For example, I have unwavering attention. If at some point as I'm traveling through space, the crew gets a little bit uppity and tries to have a mutiny, that would be an intimidate skill check. Basically, you would roll the dice, either you do well or you don't and you suffer a penalty. In this case, uh, once every three weeks, if there is an Intimidate skill check, I automatically will pass it because I picked up this talent. 
And your main character is not the only one you have to worry about. Oh no, there are a load of characters in your crew roster. I think I started off with like 30 or something, and every single one of them have different jobs and talents that you can work towards. It's actually a little bit overwhelming, and I would highly recommend that when you first start playing the game, you do not choose to manually assign all your talents. It's just too much freaking effort. Let the game do it automatically until you have a good idea what you're doing. We can also take a look at our ship. This is a Guardian Interceptor class. You can see some of the different components that are currently making up my ship, different weapon systems. Whenever I go to a new planet, I could go to the starport and try to upgrade some of these. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of different components to explore. So I can't go over everything, obviously, but this will give you some idea of the customization you could expect for your ship. Let's go ahead and travel over to this planet right here. Now this is the main map you can expect as you travel between the stars. Each of these circles will represent a different world under the control of a great house. And on each of these worlds will be a different uh, city, which will have a different population demographics, different economy, different trade goods available, and so on. There's a lot of different ways to interact with each of these planets. And this uh, map mode right here is only one of several. If I go to the galactic map mode right here, you can see that there are several of these star clusters all joined together by these hyperwarp lanes. So the galaxy itself is actually pretty large. Now, if I wanted to interact with one of these worlds, there are a few different things that I could do. In this case, the planet Shi, a large desert world under the control of the Steel Song clan, uh, these guys only sort of kind of like me. Plus three rep. That's not much at all, but they don't hate me either. We're just kind of on neutral terms. Now, depending on how I want to interact with this faction, uh, I have a few options. I could go on a defensive patrol of the system, which would chase off pirates, help manage the traffic, basically do them a good turn, and then hope that they'll do me a good turn and I'll improve my reputation. Alternatively, I could blockade the planet, be a pirate, raid their merchants, take their stuff, really upset these guys. Could be a thing you want to do. Or lastly, we could spy on the planet, try to gather up some intelligence, which maybe we could use against these guys in the future. Now, each of these kind of have a mini game. For example, let's suppose I went on a defensive patrol. You can see that there are five cards that have laid out here. These are five different possibilities that could uh, occur from this defensive patrol. Now, there's a rumor, uh, smugglers uncover rumors. Some of these things are pretty good. Some of these are really dangerous. A death among the crew, that sounds absolutely terrible. In order to reduce the risk, then what I'm going to do is use a crew talent to remove one of these cards like so. Then it's automatically going to do the patrol. And we got the ship danger. Oh, that's fun. Okay, well, uh, several components in my, uh, in my ship just got damaged. Fun. We actually managed to contain the explosion and prevent a lot of the damage, but yeah, that's something that just happened. And then we could repeat it. Sometimes this results in stuff where we can improve our reputation, sometimes it doesn't. Blockading and spying is exactly the same kind of a minigame. It's all RNG. You can try to control it a little bit using some of your crew talents. Now, if you don't care about any of those, you could interact with the planet by going to the city. For example, on the planet of Shi, there is a city of Koraloth, a high-tech industrial city, pretty high in population, really strong military presence, pretty solid economy. If we land here, we could go to the starport. This would allow us to refuel our ship, which I automatically do. We could repair some of the damage we just took, and we could buy some upgrades for the different components I showed you if we wanted to, although these do get kind of expensive. Alternatively, we could go to the Spice Hall, which is where we can interact with some of our crew members. We can pay their salaries so that they are happy and don't mutiny. We could recruit some new people. We could entertain some of these guys if they're feeling sad, or go to the doctor if a few of our people were injured. And then lastly, we can go to an exchange, which will allow us to buy any of the trade goods. Uh, this is actually a pretty helpful map mode because it gives you a good idea if the price you're looking at is pretty fair. Some cases, you're going to find uh, planets that have a lot of a particular trade good, and they're going to sell for a very low price, which you can then transfer somewhere else in the galaxy and sell for a huge profit. It's up to you. And now if we wanted to take a look at the UI itself, there's a few things we could do. Here's the money that I currently possess, a list of the different missions, a whole bunch of different contacts, people that are important and notable in the galaxy. Some of these people really like me, and some of them really do not. It kind of depends on how I've interacted with them in the past. Now, the contacts in this game are arguably one of the most interesting mechanics available in Star Trader's Frontiers. Because each of these contacts has their own story, their own agenda, their own missions they're handing out, trying to increase their influence throughout the galaxy. And depending on how you interact with them will increase your reputation. 
You can then use that reputation to secure better trade permits. Perhaps uh, level up in their military and get bonuses for every mission you complete with them. Maybe get a death edict so that I can have the right to go and assassinate somebody in their name. Reputation becomes very important to manage between all of the different houses, and they're not always working on the same side. So uh, finding that delicate balance of who you're willing to make a friend and who you're willing to make an enemy becomes really important and can ultimately change the course of the entire galaxy. And I do want to touch on combat real quick in this game. Whether you're in space or you're on the ground, both are turn-based combat systems, though they operate a bit differently. In space, you only have so many reactor points that you can use per turn, and you can use that to advance closer to your enemy, uh, use different weapon systems which have different optimal ranges, so that's one of the reasons positioning can become pretty important, and then you can manage a bunch of different tactics and abilities from your bridge crew in order to improve your, uh, your buffs. Ground combat works a bit differently. It's still turn-based, but it reminds me a lot more of the Darkest Dungeon style of turn-based combat, where you're going to have your characters roll different initiative, uh, and then they will use their abilities to either damage, or to heal, or to buff, or debuff a target in order to win a combat scenario. Currently, I'd say that ground-based combat is a little bit bland and could use some loving, uh, but we'll see how things turn out going forward. Now let's take a look at some gameplay. This in-game footage I recorded earlier today should give you a good idea of what a typical sitting in Star Traders Frontiers can look like. So I started my day off traveling to the world of Hydra Tri-C, a luxurious world where I had a mission to deliver something, I don't remember. But when I arrived, I discovered that the planet had been locked under quarantine for reasons unknown. Was it some sort of plague? A security threat? No idea. But apparently something had happened in the galaxy that shut off an entire planet and ruined my mission. So my plans got scrapped, and instead I decided to go back to my homeworld and find some missions I had been putting off. Turns out, pretty important story arc. The princess of my world was being framed by another house for murder and sabotage. Despite my best efforts to uncover evidence of a conspiracy, at great personal risk I might add, the interstellar courts ruled against her. Rather than accepting compensation, the rival house decided to invoke a blood feud, officially launching an event called a Duel of Assassins. Basically, it's a war of sanctioned murder and assassinations of major house members. And I'm figuring, hey, that suits me pretty well. I'm a bounty hunter after all. And really, what's the difference between tracking wanted criminals and slaughtering your political enemies for money? Because of that event, a whole bunch of new missions became available, and I immediately traveled into enemy space in search of a prominent military commander to assassinate. Now, he didn't want to leave his planet at first, so I had to blockade the planet, and I started raiding his shipping lines, trying to provoke him into an attack. It totally worked, he came and attacked me, I was able to board the ship and disable it. Then, I could have held him for ransom, but I thought, nah, this is war. So I looted the ship for what I could, then blew it to smithereens, killed him, and salvaged the wreckage. Now the rival house absolutely hates me, and I've got no hope of rebuilding that bridge. But that works just fine for me, because for good measure, I decided to attack some of their merchant ships on the way home and increase my profits. Maybe I can help escalate the duel into a full-out war, I'm not sure. But either way, it suits me just fine. So long as somebody wants someone else dead, there will always be demand for my services. Now that's just one example from several major story arcs that you can follow, and each will develop a little different based on your choices. Each contact and faction has their own agenda and missions to hand out, and you can really change the course of the galaxy if you want to. As a result, there's a lot of replayability in Star Trader's Frontiers, and in fact, that's probably its greatest strength. You have a procedurally generated galaxy with politics, betrayal, and warfare, and you're just trying to navigate through it all and make a living. <laughs> Alright, now let's wrap up this video with some final thoughts. I think Star Trader's Frontiers has the potential to be something great. It's rare to find a game that plays like a sandbox, but has the capacity to form a proper fluid storyline through the contact system. And in many ways, that's what makes it a true pure-blooded RPG to me. There are going to be some hardcore RPG fans who will adore a game like this. You've also got a load of customization, from the skill and the talent system to ship configurations, I mean, I can imagine that if I played long enough, I'd be able to create a unique setup for every job, whether that's training, exploring, or hunting. I'll also say that a major upside to this game is the responsiveness of the developers. 
The game has gone through a couple of content updates every week on average since I've received it, and the developers are quick to respond to feedback in the forums. That's a pretty big plus, I think. The game does have its drawbacks, though. The uh, learning curve can be pretty steep, and there's not much hand-holding to get you familiar with the UI and the game mechanics. The UI itself, I think, could use some improvements. Currently, it doesn't feel very intuitive to me. Combat itself can be a little bit bland, and of course, I'd love to see the artwork and the animations fleshed out to make the game more visually appealing. There are a couple of other areas that I would personally like to see changed, though at this stage of development, that may not be feasible, but I'll throw it out there just in case it's helpful. The skill check system seems kind of pointless to me. When I'm traveling through space, I'll get a couple dozen skill checks per trip, but I never pay attention because it happens so frequently and I almost always pass, so it just becomes meaningless noise, and I don't think that's what the developers intended for a major game mechanic. Also, as a matter of personal preference, I would have liked to see much smaller crews, and maybe that option will become available later. The way I see it, there are two ways to approach a starship game. Star Trek style, or Firefly style, as I call it. Star Trek style has a core group of bridge officers that you care about, and then a bunch of forgettable background characters. And that's what 90% of my crew feels like right now. I would prefer Firefly style, where the ship only houses six or seven crew members, each with their own quirks and personalities. I just would find myself more emotionally invested in a smaller group that relies on each other if I'm going to be playing an RPG. But again, those are changes I wouldn't expect to see implemented at this stage of development, and that's perfectly fine. Overall, Star Traders Frontiers is turning out to be a dream come true for gamers that love classic true RPG experiences. The procedurally generated open world, where it's up to you to make your own story, is a rare experience in today's industry. With a few, few tweaks to make the game more accessible to a wider audience, I really think this game could be very well received on full release. But at the very least, if you enjoy RPGs, then this is a game to keep on your radar. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you have found this video helpful in some way. If you did enjoy, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment with your thoughts, and of course subscribe if you have not already. My name is Provis, and I will see you guys next time.